Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this uh, sixth lecture. Um, in order to motivate uh, what I am going to do the next few lectures, uh, let us look at a particular uh, example. Uh, so, um, I take the, uh, the cylinder uh, and uh, um, on the other hand I also take C star, which is the uh, set of complex numbers uh, excepting 0, set of non-zero complex numbers. Um, and then I can also look at delta star, which is the unit disk minus uh, the origin. So, this is the punctured unit disk, okay, um, where of course, uh, delta is the unique disk namely it is a set of all complex numbers such that mod z is less than 1. Okay. And then of course, I can also consider uh, uh, an annulus uh, delta r. So, this is the set of all complex numbers z such that the modulus of z is less than 1 and it is greater than r and uh, here uh, r uh, r is a real number positive real number positive fraction okay it's an element of 0 1 right so i have i have basically uh, the cylinder i have the the punctured plane i have the punctured unit disk and i have the annulus here okay and uh, you know um, uh, the point I am trying to say is that if you are going to look at these things as uh, these objects as topological spaces, then they are all the same, they are all homeomorphic. Uh, for example, um, I, I, can, I can easily tell you uh, how you can uh, show that the cylinder and C star uh, are homeomorphic. In fact, in the last lecture, I told you that uh, if you try to look at various uh, uh, structures of a Riemann surface on a cylinder, then I told you uh, uh, that if you take the set of isomorphism classes of Riemann surface structures on a cylinder, uh, uh, such that uh, uh, you know the uh, though I, and I and I am looking at um, uh, Riemann surface structures that have been gotten uh, by choosing uh, a non-zero complex number and looking at the uh, you know uh, subgroup of automorphisms uh, of the whole complex plane given by translations by that complex number, which was a subgroup that was isomorphic to z. And then I said you go c mod z, you go c mod the subgroup, then you get c mod z which is essentially a cylinder. And I was also trying to tell you that uh, the various Riemann surface structures that you get in this way, if you look at the isomorphism classes, set of isomorphism classes of such Riemann surfaces, then there is only one. And, uh, and I told you that uh, the, uh, the standard representative is C star. And in order to show that uh, uh, C star is C mod z, I told you that is because of this, uh, because of the following uh, uh, C mod z is isomorphic to C star, uh, that is by considering the, uh, uh, the exponential map. So, you just send z to e power 2 pi i z. And uh, this mapping will have for its kernel uh, the integers and uh, uh, therefore, the source modulo the kernel uh, thought of as an additive group is isomorphic to C star thought of as a multiplicative group and this is the map. Okay. So, essentially I am just saying that C mod z is C star 
and of course you know C mod Z is also a cylinder because that is the way we got the Riemann surface structure on the cylinder okay. So, um, uh, in fact uh, 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 one way of uh, one other way of uh, 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 looking at uh, an, a homeomorphism between C star and the cylinder is, 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 is as follows as one of my uh, students pointed out. Uh, so, it is uh, what you do is that you think of uh, notice that um, if P 1, um, so let me not use P 1, um, let, let S 2 be the real sphere okay. And so, you think of uh, the real sphere as sitting here. So, this is the think of this as unit circle on the x y plane. The, the axis of the cylinder is uh, along the z axis, but do not confuse that z with the complex number z and you have the unit sphere here okay. And what you do is uh, you have the origin here okay. Now, to every point on the cylinder you join the point to the uh, to the origin by a line and uh, it will meet the the, uh, the sphere at a point okay and call that point as q okay in this way you will get a map from uh, you will get a map from the cylinder to the uh, sphere and the only point is that you will not get uh, the the north pole because uh, uh, essentially there is no point on the cylinder which when joined to the origin is going to give you the north pole and the same thing is going to happen to the to the south pole as well. So, if I call the north pole as n and the south pole as s, so you get a map from the cylinder minus you know the north pole and the south pole <coughs> okay. And uh, you can check that uh, uh, this is a homeomorphism. this is a homeomorphism. And this is another uh, way of saying that the cylinder uh, uh, is actually C star. And the reason is because you know the uh, uh, the sphere minus the north pole uh, by the stereographic projection is just the complex plane. And the complex plane minus uh, you know the this uh, in under the stereo stereographic projection the south pole corresponds to the origin. So, if you remove the origin from the complex plane this is just C star. So, let me let me put uh, uh, identify via stereographic projection with C star ok. So, this is a direct way of uh, trying to understand to trying to realize that the cylinder and C star are homeomorphic ok. Um, now, let me tell you about uh, uh, the following theorem. So, I will recall, so I will recall this theorem, theorem um, uh, uh, fixing z uh, not equal to 0, let me say uh, in a non zero complex number, ok. Uh, uh, let uh, uh, as consider uh, the uh, Riemann's the Riemann surface structure on uh, the cylinder um, uh, given by the uh, given by the quotient map C modulo uh, n. Uh, so, let me use z dot t z naught t z which is a cylinder. and I have. So, this is the 
the quotient map which sends <coughs> every so what it will do is uh, if, if you want I'll, let me call this as um, um, or let, let me call the variable here um, rather let me call this variable as, as omega and let me call this t sub omega <coughs> okay so you have the map uh, so this is this is the natural quotient map and what is the quotient map you send every complex number to its equivalence class under the uh, under the action by the group of translations by integer multiples of omega okay so what is this map this is just you send z to uh, the equivalence class class uh, uh, containing z namely uh, which is the equivalence class is the set the set of all uh, z plus n times omega where n uh, is an integer. So these are just translates of z by omega and integer multiples of omega and this is this is one equivalence class which contains z and this is the uh, unique equivalence class which contains z and this is the map okay and when I say fixing omega not equal to 0 what we mean is that in, in writing down this map maybe I should even put pi sub omega because it depends on this choice of omega the only condition on omega is that omega is non zero okay and uh, what do I mean by consider the Riemann surface structure on the cylinder given by the quotient map what I mean is you make this into a Riemann surface the way you make it into a Riemann surface is by actually getting an uh, for a point on the cylinder you get a map in the other direction which is a homeomorphism okay namely the method was you take a point here okay and then you take a take a pre image for example take z so a point here will and be an equivalence class that will come from a point z so you take a pre image take a small enough disk and make sure that the radius of the disk or the diameter of the disk is very small when compared to the modulus of this complex number okay and then you take the image of uh, that disk under this map this mapping is an open mapping and as a result you will get a neighborhood of that point which is isomorphic to this disk which is the which is a disk around the pre image and this gives you a local coordinate chart and this is how you get the Riemann surface structure and once you get the Riemann surface structure this map uh, uh, becomes a holomorphic map okay so this is what we saw last time so so let me complete that sentence fixing omega not equal to 0 in c let us consider the Riemann surface structure on the cylinder given by the quotient map uh, uh, be holomorphic uh, as so <coughs> now uh, the question is if I vary omega if I vary omega in principle I can get various uh, Riemann surface structures on the cylinder which would depend on omega okay and what is the but of course uh, uh, all these structures will correspond to a quotient map like this right that is the only uh, common thing but as you change omega you are getting different Riemann surfaces in, 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 in principle but what is it that the theorem says the theorem says no matter what you uh, no matter how you change omega if you consider them up to isomorphism you get only one and that one Riemann surface is going to be the Riemann surface structure on C star see mind you C star is just an open subset of C okay and any open subset of a Riemann surface is again a Riemann surface because the only condition for a something for surface to be a Riemann surface an open subset of a surface is still a surface it is still two dimensional okay and it is still a uh, it is still a Riemann surface because at every point in that surface I can still find local coordinate charts okay uh, all I have to do is take a coordinate chart with respect to the full surface and then intersect it with this open set I will get a smaller coordinate chart so uh, every uh, open subset of a Riemann surface is again a Riemann surface in particular uh, C star is also a Riemann surface naturally uh, being an open subset of C so C star inherit inherits the 
Riemann surface structure from C, okay, natural Riemann surface structure from C. And what I am saying is that this Riemann surface structure uh, on C star, which is the sphere minus these two points by this identification, if I transfer it to the cylinder by this homeomorphism, I will get Riemann surface structure on the cylinder. And I am saying it is that Riemann surface which is a representative for the uh, set of isomorphism classes of Riemann surfaces arising in this way, which I say is a single term. Okay. So, let me write that down, the, the, the set, uh, set of all, uh, 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 let me call this as, uh, 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 well, let me do something. I will call this cylinder as uh, uh, script C and uh, uh, let me call this, uh, 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 let me call the Riemann surface structure on the cylinder as C sub omega, okay, because in general you might expect it to depend on omega, let me call it as C sub omega. Okay. So, you take the set C sub omega, where omega not equal to 0, omega is a complex number, take this set okay. and then you go modulo the equivalence relation which is isomorphism of Riemann surfaces. Okay. So, mod uh, isomorphism of Riemann surfaces, okay. then this is, is a single term, this is a single term, this is a single term and, and uh, uh, is identified and, uh, and, and is represented, represented by by the uh, Riemann surface C star. Okay. So, this was the theorem that I uh, wrote down last time, right? one of the theorems that I wrote down last time. Last time before I considered the case of a torus, I considered the case of a cylinder. Okay. Now, I want to, <coughs> uh, now I want to state another theorem. So, here is the theorem. Okay. So, now let me look at all possible uh, Riemann surface structures on the cylinder. Okay. Take the cylinder, let me look at all possible Riemann surface structures on the cylinder. Notice that when I do this, uh, the cylinder is also uh, C star topologically, Cylind cylinder is also delta star okay. and there, is all, there are also the annuli, okay. they are all homeomorphic. Okay. And uh, the point I want to make is that uh, on delta star there is a natural Riemann surface structure, because delta star the unit disc, uh, the punctured unit disc that is the unit disc minus the origin is also an open subset of C. So, it also has a Riemann surface structure, but notice that uh, and, and similarly the uh, an annulus like this. So, this is this corresponds to uh, uh, an annulus like this. So, you know it is it is the uh, unit disc. Uh, minus uh, the origin, so I put a dot there. So this is uh, 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 no, no, no. So that was delta star. So this that was delta. So let me draw it here, uh, or let me just draw this as it is. Rather, let me draw it like this. So this is uh, this is R. This this is R, and this is one. Okay. So this is my <coughs> this is my annulus. Okay. And uh, and this is also a Riemann surface naturally, because I told you every open subset of a Riemann surface is also a Riemann surface. So, this is an open subset of the complex plane, mind you the, the boundary circles are not included, okay. it is the, it's the interior, uh, you, do, you remove the boundary circles. Okay. The boundary circles will be included only if I put also less than or equal to, the inner circle is included only if I put less than or equal to here and the outer circle is included only if I put less than or equal to there. So, these boundary circles are not there. Okay, it's it's the interior of that is an open annulus, and that has a Riemann surface structure. Okay, now the amazing thing is that these are all these are all homeomorphic. Uh, uh, topologically, they are all homeomorphic to the cylinder, so they should all give you Riemann surface structures on the cylinder. Okay, but notice that C star, uh, C star and delta star, or for that matter, C star and delta R, can never be biholomorphic. Okay. Why? Because you see, uh, if C star and delta star or C star and delta R is biholomorphic, that means you have you have a 
by holomorphic mapping from C star to delta star or from C star to delta R, but it is impossible to have even a holomorphic map from C star to delta R or delta star, delta R or delta star, why? Because once you have a holomorphic map from C star to delta R or delta star, the, the it is a holomorphic map which in a neighborhood of the origin uh, is in a deleted neighborhood of the hood of the origin is bounded because the image is going to go into delta star and delta r they are bounded. So, you have a holomorphic map which is in a deleted neighborhood of the point uh, namely the origin it is a bounded map okay, and Riemann's theorem on removable singularities uh, will tell you that uh, that will extend to a holomorphic map from C okay. and if it extends to a holomorphic map from C to either delta star or delta r you are going to get an entire function which is bounded because it has extended from C star to C it is going to become an entire function and then since its image is going to lie in delta star or delta r it is going to be a bounded entire function and Liouville's theorem is now going to tell you that it has to be a constant. So, what this tells you is that it is impossible to find a holomorphic map from C star to delta r to, 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 to delta r or to delta star. So, the moral of the story is delta star and delta r are certainly going to give you Riemann surface structures which are different from the natural Riemann surface structure on C star. So, you are going to get some other non isomorphic Riemann surface structures on the cylinder okay. and then uh, in fact the amazing thing is that uh, no Riemann surface structure of the form uh, that is there on delta r can be by holomorphic to uh, the Riemann surface structure on delta star and in fact you know in fact delta if you take delta r 1 and delta r 2 for different r's they are all non by non by holomorphic. So, the amazing thing is you get a whole family of uh, Riemann surface structures possibility of Riemann surface structures on the on the cylinder okay. So, so that is the uh, that is the next level of uh, complication that you see in the theory okay and uh, somehow the idea is how do you uh, uh, how do you uh, analyze the situation okay and the uh, the point is you analyze the situation by using some more techniques namely you use the notion of what is called the fundamental group and the associated covering space okay and the techniques of the fundamental group and covering spaces helps you to disting distinguish these uh, Riemann surface structures. So, let me write it down here. So, uh, the, the set of all possible Riemann surface structures, uh, in fact I should say uh, isomorphism classes the set of isomorphism classes of all possible Riemann surface structures on the cylinder okay, uh, is uh, uh, so uh, is given by so there is one structure on the cylinder which is the same as C star okay. So, what I will do is I will put C star here and I will put a square bracket saying that I am looking at all those uh, Riemann surface structures on the cylinder which are by holomorphic that is holomorphically isomorphic to C star. So, that is what the square bracket means it means take the equivalence class under the equivalence relation which is given by uh, two things two Riemann surfaces being equivalent if there is a holomorphic isomorphism with an inverse which is also a holomorphic isomorphism okay. Of course, when I say holomorphic isomorphism the inverse is automatically holomorphic and isom and it is an isomorphism and uh, so this is one class then I will put this here. So, this means disjoint union okay. Uh, so, you put disjoint union to say that uh, uh, something here does not occur anywhere else. So, the other possibility is delta star. and I again take the equivalence class and then uh, what I will get is uh, this is the, the disjoint union 
of all these delta r's such that r is a real fraction uh, real positive fraction okay uh, and uh, delta r1 uh, uh, is not biholomorphic or isomorphic to delta r2 if r1 is not equal to r2 okay. okay so you see when you look at all possible Riemann surface structures on a cylinder you uh, uh, you notice that um, uh, you are getting actually uh, three types two of them are just single terms okay and the, but the third one is a continuous family depending on one real parameter okay this real parameter is uh, uh, a real number chosen in 0 1 but of course i could scale 0 1 to be the whole real line because that's not a problem so essentially wh what happens is that if you look at isomorphism classes of riemann surface structures in a cylinder you get uh, uh, three families uh, these two are just trivial but the third one depends on one parameter okay so this is a theorem now the question is how is it that uh, uh, one can uh, go about uh, proving such a theorem so eventually we are, we, are, we are going to prove all these theorems but one needs uh, the motivation for uh, uh, introducing certain uh, uh, more and more complicated uh, tools okay and we should have some motivation otherwise there is no point in just giving definitions after definitions okay um, so um, so the the key to all this is uh, what is called uh, the the idea of a um, of a covering space okay and uh, the notion of a covering space uh, uh, is also connected with uh, the notion of the fundamental group so these are two notions that i have to explain so uh, the observation so this is the observation uh, uh, we do not have biholomorphic maps uh, i should not say even biholomorphic let me not we do not have ho even holomorphic maps Um, uh, from uh, C star uh, C to uh, delta star or C to delta R. Okay. So this is this reiterates uh, 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 what I was trying to say. Uh, uh, you cannot have a holomorphic map from C to uh, delta star, you cannot have a holomorphic map from C to any delta r, uh, because if it is uh, you know you will get a bounded entire function uh, and of course I should say uh, when I say holomorphic maps I mean non-trivial maps, I am not worried about uh, the constant maps, so I should say we do not have uh, let me say non-constant that is very important, we do not have non-constant holomorphic maps from uh, C to delta star or from C to delta R, uh, but we do have uh, a holomorphic map from C to um, uh, for example C star or uh, any uh, you know Riemann surface structure which comes in this way okay. And uh, so what is very special is uh, this map, the existence of this map from C to this uh, and that is a non-trivial map mind you it is a surjective map and that map expresses uh, this uh, uh, this Riemann surface as a quotient of the uh, complex plane okay. I, so in some sense this is leading you to believe that you know delta star cannot be uh, a, a holomorphic quotient of C, uh, delta R cannot be a holomorphic quotient of C, but C star is and every cylinder of uh, every Riemann surface structure C sub omega that I have got he gotten here is of that type and that should be the distinguishing feature okay. So it is very important to look at maps such as this and these maps are called uh, covering space maps okay. So let us uh, uh, 
So, let me write that down. Uh, however, we do have the holomorphic map, quotient map C to uh, if you want C star or C to C sub. So, that was uh, script C sub uh, calligraphic C sub omega. Uh, which are which are covering maps so uh, so what is uh, um, so what is this uh, what is the speciality of these covering maps so let me explain that so uh, so let's look at this map from c to uh, c uh, script c sub double omega which is uh, just c modulo the uh, going modulo the translations by integral multiples of a single complex number omega okay um, by, by the way i should uh, remark that uh, n times t omega which is which is t n omega is actually uh, if you want to write it in uh, multiplicative notation it is t omega to the n uh, if you think of it as composition okay but additive notation is n times t omega okay so uh, um, anyway so look at this map so if you look at this map uh, and you look at this map and look at the way in which we got the uh, riemann surface structure let's go back and look at the way we got the riemann surface structure how did we get it we did the following thing so here was a, so here was a cylinder uh, uh, so, here was a complex plane and you know omega was this vector and you know uh, we, we drew these, these strips and all these strips uh, were uh, uh, of length mod omega and uh, you know omega was uh, uh, translation by omega mapped each of these strips uh, into the other okay, and we went modulo these translations and uh, the effect yeah, of that was uh, we had to take a single strip and just identify the edges giving us a cylinder okay so uh, you got you got the you got the uh, you got the cylinder here so let me draw it here okay uh, and uh, given a point on the cylinder uh, x okay what we did was we fixed uh, we fixed a point uh, z such that z goes to x under this map and we took a small enough neighborhood of z uh, d okay small enough disk surrounding z called that as d and we took the image of that d under this map which is a spice of omega so uh, this image here is pi sub omega of d okay and uh, we noticed that uh, because i had chosen the disk d small enough the map the projection map restricted to that disk is a homeomorphism unto uh, pi omega of d. So, pi omega restricted to d from d to pi omega of d is a homeomorphism and in fact we took the inverse of this homeomorphism to give us the local coordinate chart at the point x which is uh, which if you want is the uh, is the center of pi omega of d okay or which is a point of pi omega of t and this is how we got uh, we got the the coordinate charts and the other thing that we noticed is that if you uh, take pi inverse if you take the inverse image of this uh, under uh, the whole map what you would get is just translates the union of all translates of d okay with centers corresponding to the translates of z so pi inverse of pi omega of d is is just uh, a union uh, of uh, let me say uh, union over n belonging to z uh, d plus uh, uh, translation uh, d plus n omega okay so where of course by by d plus n omega i mean 
the set of all complex numbers uh, of the form uh, uh, z plus n omega where z belongs to d okay and and mind you uh, uh, this union because i chose d to be sufficiently small this union is a is a disjoint union so uh, what is happening is that uh, this is z and this is d uh, maybe if i draw another strip here then i'll get the point here uh, this point will be z plus omega and this disk will be just d plus omega okay and similarly if i take the point here uh, this point would be z minus omega and uh, you know this disk would be d minus omega and so in this way you get a union of disks uh, they are all disjoint and uh, this is essentially the uh, the uh, the standard example of water covering spaces okay so uh, i let me make a definition definition uh, let um, x uh, and uh, x tilde be topological spaces spaces okay uh, uh, assume um, x x tilde are pathways connected and locally pathways connected So this is what I'm writing in bracket is a technicality, and the importance of that technicality, uh, uh, when it when it when it has to be stressed, I'll stress it. But for the moment, just uh, assume this technicality. Don't worry about it for the moment. So there are two topological spaces. Okay, a map pi, uh, or let me call it as p, from x tilde to x is called a covering map if uh, p is continuous surjective and given x in x given a point of x small x of capital x you are able to produce a an open set surrounding x such that the inverse image of that open set under p so i am thinking of this as x tilde this as x and i am thinking of this as p okay and you give me a point in x small x in capital x i should be able to find an open set such that the inverse image of this open set is a disjoint union of open sets and the the project the the, the map p restricted to each of these open sets is a homeomorphism so in fact what i should tell you here also so uh, so let me also add this here uh, uh, let me add that condition also here uh, uh, that's another remark uh, if pi restricted to uh, d plus uh, let me take some n times omega from uh, d plus n omega to Uh, pi omega so this is uh, pi sub omega of uh, d plus n omega which is the same as pi omega of d is also a homeomorphism okay in fact uh, i i took uh, pi from this uh, disk d into uh, its image here but i could have as well taken any translate because after all all of them are going to be identified okay so uh, i want the same kind of thing to happen uh, uh, in in a covering space situation so let me write that down uh, so given x uh, belong to belong to x there exists an open set uh, u uh, uh, containing x with uh, pi inverse uh, or p inverse of u p inverse of u 
is a disjoint union over some indexing, indexing set alpha uh, V alpha V alpha in the space above being open and pi uh, or rather p p restricted to v alpha from uh, v alpha to u u a homeomorphism is a homeomorphism So, uh, so the standard situation is that we have x tilde above, we have x below, we have a map which is surjective continuous, given a point below, okay, I should be able to find a neighborhood u such that the inverse image is a disjoint union of open sets above such that when you map, when you restrict this map, this, this map. Uh, to each of those open sets, what you get is a homeomorphism with the open set below. Such an open set is called an admissible open set, it is called an admissible neighborhood for the point x and uh, uh, we say that it is a covering space if every point has an admissible uh, uh, open set. Okay. And um, so, this is a standard covering space situation, right. And uh, uh, the, the, the other example that uh, you can look at is um, uh, is that of uh, uh, the torus. Okay, so in the case of the torus, what we did was we we fixed uh, uh, two complex numbers. Okay, and we went we took the complex plane and went modulo uh, the translations by integer multiples of these two uh, complex numbers. Of course, we made the condition that the ratio of these two complex numbers is not real because we wanted them. Uh, as vectors to be linearly independent on the plane. Okay, so uh, look at that situation. So we have uh, omega. Uh, let me call it as omega one, omega two, in in C. Well, of course, uh, non-zero, and with omega one by omega two is not a real number. Okay, and then you have this map C to uh, C mod. Uh, you take uh, the group which is uh, which consists of translation by integer multiples of omega 1 plus uh, translation by integer multiples of omega 2 okay so this is uh, this is this group is uh, isomorphic to z cross z okay and uh, then this was this gives this gave you uh, uh, on so there was uh, the, the quotient is a torus the quotient is a torus and it gave you a Riemann surface structure on the torus and uh, uh, let us call that Riemann surface structure as uh, omega 1 comma omega 2. Okay. Um, and in this uh, situation also if you call this map as pi of course you know uh, you should be this is pi uh, which depends on omega 1 and omega 2. Okay. Uh, then you can check that this is also a covering map this is also a covering space map in exactly the same way in exactly the same way the only thing is that uh, in this case uh, uh, the in this case the in, the in the cylinder case the plane was divided into uh, you know uh, strips of infinite length translations of a single strip okay but there the plane will be divided into a grid of parallelograms and essentially uh, uh, all these parallelograms can be identified to one parallelogram and then the only thing you will have to do is identify the opposing edges of the parallelogram and that will give you a torus. Okay. So, uh, you can check that this is also a covering space. So, the moral of the story is that um, the trying to get uh, the Riemann surface structure on a torus or trying to get the Riemann surface structure on a cylinder in this way as a quotient of uh, the complex plane uh, already involves a situation where there is a natural uh, uh, occurrence of this idea of a covering space. Okay. 
and uh, and that is uh, and that is uh, the uh, the motivation for looking at covering spaces in general so the most general theorem that that we have is that take any riemann surface just take any riemann surface then you can think of it as the quotient by a suitable uh, covering space and uh, to make this uh, covering space very special uh, namely to make to choose one special covering space among all covering spaces that could be different covering spaces okay um, in this context let me tell you that uh, uh, this map factors through first going modulo uh, you know uh, just going modulo translations by integral multiples of omega 1 alone okay that would give you a cylinder okay and then there is there is going to be another quotient so I can do this in any order I want and what it will tell you is that uh, this covering space uh, diagram can break down into two more covering spaces uh, with the intermediate one being the cylinder okay. So uh, that means that you have uh, two covering spaces for this okay and why, why is the covering space C special and uh, why is it uh, different from the covering space that corresponds to a cylinder it the, the point is that C is simply connected whereas the cylinder is not okay and it happens that among all the covering spaces if you look at covering spaces which are simply connected you get a very special type of covering space that is called the universal covering space and then it is an amazing theorem that any Riemann surface can be uh, obtained as a quotient of a universal covering space which is a simply connected cover, cover okay and uh, the story does not stop there uh, what happens is uh, suppose you believe that theorem okay so given a Riemann surface I have a covering space for it and that covering space is simply connected okay now because of the covering space property locally neighborhoods there are homeomorphic to neighborhood neighborhoods here okay so what I can do is I can transport the Riemann surface structure on the Riemann surface to the covering space itself and that will make the covering space into a Riemann surface okay and so what I would get is I would get a, a Riemann surface which is simply connected but then my basic uniformization theorem says any simply connected Riemann surface has to either be the complex plane or the unit disc which is the same as the upper half plane or the Riemann sphere. So what is the upshot of all this? The upshot of all this is take any Riemann surface I have to obtain it it is possible for me to obtain it as a quotient of either the Riemann sphere or the complex plane or the unit disc or the upper half plane okay. So uh, I am I am able to get a hold on the Riemann surfaces uh, by being able to get them as quotients of these three basic Riemann surfaces which are simply connected and that is that is what helps and to to carry out this process therefore you need uh, to uh, get into a study of covering spaces okay. So that is what I am going to do in the, in the forthcoming lectures and uh, the other thing that I have to tell you is where is it that the, the, the fundamental group is uh, coming into the picture. So um, I, I let I will uh, I will I will define uh, what the fundamental group is in a very formal way uh, in the next lecture but roughly let me tell you the fundamental group is trying to look at uh, 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 trying to fix a point on a topological space and trying to look at loops start, uh, starting at that point you know continuous path starting at that point and ending at that point and you declare two such loops to be one the same if one can be continuously deformed to the other. Okay. So you do this and uh, you can compose loops okay. and in this way you can uh, form a group which is called the fundamental group okay. and uh, this fundamental group uh, uh, shows up in the, uh, in the case when this uh, covering is a universal covering namely the fibers of this map when x tilde is universal covering of x mind you I told you that x tilde uh, is called a universal covering if it is simply connected okay and then uh, by putting this condition of simply connectedness on x tilde uh, 
uh, that makes X tilde unique in a certain way, which I will explain. Okay. It singles X tilde out as a special covering space called the universal covering space. And then what happens if this is the uh, special universal covering space for X, then the fundamental group of X shows up as the fibers of this map. Okay. Fibers of a map are just inverse images of single points. Okay. So, if you watch carefully in this map, the, the inverse image of a point is just a copy of Z. It is all translates of, uh, so the inverse image of the point X is all translates of Z by omega, integer translates of Z by omega. And the set of all integer translates of Z by omega is, can be treated as Z. Okay. Similarly, you take a point here, the inverse image of a point here will be a grid. It will be, it will be all integer transla uh, translates by integer multiples of these two non-zero complex numbers. So, the inverse image of this point is uh, a set of dots okay, uh, going in a direction perpendicular in a direction which is equal to the direction of omega which is uh, perpendicular to the direction of the strips and there the inverse image of a point will give you a grid. Okay. It will be actually the grid of parallelograms uh, if you take the vertices of the parallelograms it is just that grid translated by a certain vector okay. and what is that? Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, what is the grid of points? It's another, it is again z direct from z. Okay, so in this case, the inverse image of a point is just can be identified with a copy of z. In this case, the inverse image of a point can be identified with a copy of z direct from z. But what are what is this z? What is the z direct from z? The the fundamental group of the cylinder, which is the object below, is z, and that is what is showing up as the fiber, as the inverse image of a point. The fundamental group of the torus is z direction is z cross z, and that is what is showing up as a fiber over a point. So, what will happen is when you take the universal covering space, the fundamental group of the base will show up as the fibers, not as a group, at least as a set. Okay. So, in some sense, the universal covering space is uh, gotten by putting as many copies of the fundamental group of X as there are points in X, putting together of course in a, a topological kind of way. Okay. So, the moral of the story is the fundamental group enters into the picture okay. and, that is in, and that is the reason why the fundamental groups also have to be studied in this connection. Okay. Uh, that is so that is one point. Then the other point, notice that uh, the fundamental group in this case which is z is also equal to this group. It is the group of translations by which we have gone modulo. Okay. Look at this case, the fundamental group is z direct from z or z cross z. That is again the, uh, the same as isomorphic to this group which is the group of translations that we have gone modulo. So, the moral of the story is not only does the fundamental group show up set theoretically as a fiber over any point, it is also the group of automorphisms of the space above going modulo which you get this space. So, if P from X tilde to X is a universal covering space, then X is actually a quotient of X tilde by a certain group of automorphisms of X tilde and that group of automorphisms of X tilde is nothing but the fundamental group of X. So, so uh, the fundamental group shows up in two ways. It shows up as the fiber which is the inverse image of any point, any single point and it also shows up as the group of automorphisms of the, uh, the covering space, the space on the top modulo which if you go you get the space below and that is exactly the quotient situation. Uh, that gives you, that helped us to give uh, you know a Riemann surface structure on the cylinder or on the torus. Okay, so, uh, the moral of the story is therefore, if you understand the notion of uh, uh, covering space and the notion of uh, fundamental uh, I mean and the notion of uh, universal covering space, then you have a key to uh, trying to reduce the uh, study of uh, Riemann surface structures just to studying such 
uh, such maps which are covering space maps and that is the importance okay so and and that is in fact that is a technique by which uh, most of the theorems of this type are proved in fact all the theorems that i have told so far except for the very fundamental theorem that uh, you know the only simply connected riemann surfaces are those which are either isomorphic to the you know the non in the non compact case it's either the uh, whole plane or the unit disk which is the upper half plane and the compact case it is just the riemann sphere so, but this is this is the most fundamental theorem uh, proving this re requires uh, further techniques of analysis for example but if you assume this theorem okay and you assume this uh, uh, stuff about uh, covering spaces then more or less all other theorems can be proved so which is what i'm going to do in the next few lectures okay so all this is just <coughs> a pep talk uh, uh, for you to uh, you know uh, await the definition and you know the intricacies that involve covering spaces and fundamental groups in the forthcoming lectures okay great so i'll stop here Thank you.